Hello, vinyl community. It's Bill here again. And would you believe it? This is my hundredth video for YouTube and the vinyl community. Might be one or two uh, private ones on different subjects, but uh, yeah, the bulk of uh, these hundred videos have been on my record collection and yeah, taking part in contests by Richard McCook and following threads, you know, started by people on both sides of the Atlantic and connecting up with people down under in Australia and in Canada and even in Scotland. So this video is called The Existential Crisis or The Collection. So I was checking with my Discogs, uh, I catalog things on Discogs now, so yeah, it's, uh, it's uh, getting there. So according to Discogs, I've got 964 items. So if I look at that and I have the Beatles box set, so that means that I need to add 13 albums because there was 14 albums in that uh, box set. I've got a Neil Young collection uh, that is four CDs, so I need to add three. You get the picture. So I've got best of best jazz collection in the world ever. So I need it to, and that was 25 CDs, so I need to add 24, etc. Cetera, etc. Cetera. So if I take a account of all these additional albums and Take away the singles, I've got 1,026 albums in the collection. So, yeah, I know that's uh, not very many. It's uh, quite a modest collection. And when I see the all the uh, stacks of records that Mazzy and various other people have, yeah, it's uh, it is a very modest <laughs> collection. But yeah, now, what I've decided is that I'm going to have a collection of 1,111, so 1111 records. So is my collection uh, a life's work? Uh, is it carefully curated? Mm, or did it just a mass <laughs> over the years since uh, 1971 when I when I bought my first album. So there, there's something to think about. I, I was watching uh, some of the responses to the show the albums that you've listened to a hundred times or more. And I was interested when Dale from Gatefold 33 said that uh, he was trying to keep his collection to around 2,000. So if I'm going to keep my collection to 1,111, then I am going to be very careful about the albums that get called and the albums that get added. So, yeah. Uh, so I think I've, I've got currently, did I say, I've got 1,026 currently. So a bit of leeway, uh, that allows me to add 85 albums. <laughs> and then it's going to get really tough. It's going to be one album in and one album out. And this will help with the, the space for the uh, record collection. I've got, uh, well, when I say records, uh, there's quite a few CDs in there. So I think maybe the majority is CDs. And then there must be around uh, 500 vinyl format uh, long playing records. How's this collection going to be? carefully curated. 
Uh, one interesting thing is, do I buy the the albums for the music or for the artwork? So I think it's mainly for the music, but artwork is important. I'll be showing some albums uh, shortly, but yeah. Uh, go to show some books, first of all. Shown this one before, Rock File 3. And inside it, there's a list of albums. So there's uh, Led Zeppelin 2, there's Runes or Led Zeppelin 4, there's uh, Iron Butterflies in Acada da Vida, and various Bob Dylan, Beatles, Who, etc. So that was a list of a hundred albums that uh, I, th I think this book was written in, published in 75. So early in the collecting game, I did think, will I collect all 100 of these? And then similarly, another good book is The Rock Primer, and there's sections on soul, country, British beat, Dylan and after, California Sun and the 70s. Again, I thought, yeah. And it, it was called The Rock Primer because there's quite a lot of compilations in here and uh, a good way of getting some of the, the essential singles as well. And then another book. This is a lockdown book. I think I bought it uh, just before lockdown. But yeah, look through this. And I don't have many albums that are in this rare record guide. I've got quite a, quite a few, but uh, nothing that I would say was rare. And then there's things such as a thousand and one albums you must hear. Not you must own, but you must hear before you die. So, yeah. Jam, Motorhead. Two albums that I don't have in the collection. I don't have anything with Courtney, uh, Courtney Love and Hole. And strangely enough, no. OK Computer in the collection. So do I need OK Computer or would that just be making my collection like everybody else's? Yeah. So I have to confess, I got a huge amount of classic rock. So things that not everybody, but a lot of people <laughs> would have in the collection. So, yeah, let's show some records then. So I've got singles. You can see a Beatles and a uh, White Stripes in the background, uh, together with my work in progress, David Bowie painting. I've got 12 inch singles. So this is uh, from the Sugar Hill uh, record label and it's the Adventures of Grandmaster Flash on the wheels of steel good while ago bought a 10 inch album Ooh, this is a great uh, it's a honky tonk uh, swing piano uh, i don't know if it's a uh, yeah a sort of fluid driving style of barrel house boogie piano love this uh, and so I bought it from a shop called One Up when it was still in Rosemount Viaduct in uh, Aberdeen. Before. Then, yeah, recently bought a 10 inch double album, Christmas at the Party. So that's staying in the collection, come what me. It was a bit of nostalgia because my brother had that. And then I'm thinking, yeah, should my collection become more? Bill, more my own taste and music. 
and yeah, not governed by all these lists, but yeah, bill vinyl lists, yeah, lists are very important. So this is little Johnny Taylor, Part Time Love, uh, on the Charlie record label. Charlie had a great uh, reissue series, but yeah, this uh, is uh, great stuff. Uh, we've got My Special Rose, How Can a Broke Man Survive? I'll Make It Worth Your While. One of the uh, things I have thought recently is, should I be completing this sort of series? Motown's anthology collections. Do I have that by the Jackson 5? A similar one, it's called Looking Back. Uh, and this is uh, a triple album, Stevie Wonder, all the stuff from uh, thank you for loving me all this way, Fingertips Part 2, right through to If You Really Love Me, My Sharia Moore. So all the stuff before Talking Book and Songs in the Key of Life, etc. I did, oh William, why did you sell it? I did have the anthology collection of Smokey Robinson and the the Miracles with uh, Got a Job and yeah, early, what do you call it, Northern Soul singles. Uh, why did I sell that? I don't know. Was it I needed some money when I was a poor student? Oh, so I need to get that one back in the collection. So other things is I've got, yeah, quite extensive collections of uh, the Beatles, uh, I have that Beatles uh, stereo vinyl box set. My Jack White collection is coming along. I think I need a couple of Dead Weather uh, albums. The Stones collection, I think I just need Bridges to Babylon. Probably get that in CD. Uh, and the David Bowie collection is uh, quite good up until the tin machine stuff, but I, I have finished it off with with the next day and Black Star is, as I've said many times before, one of my all-time favorite albums and right up in the top five of uh, the Bowie collection as far as I'm concerned. So I'm going to show another book. This is a great book uh, called Dust and Grooves. Quite a heavy tome. Uh, I, I love looking at the, the pictures in this, but yeah, as I said, I've got a very mod modest collection. Uh, this guy has found a, a nice gap in his uh, collection so that uh, he can have a seat. I'll show you some other ones. So yeah, I love this guy. <laughs> He's a uh, I think it's just the collector and his dad, and I think they've amassed a, a great or very, is it a largest, he, Alessandro Benedetti holds a Guinness World Record for the largest collection of coloured vinyl records. And this is him pictured with his dad in their home in Maranello. And yeah, all these cups on top of the record shelves are for playing Sabutio. There's somebody having a great time looking through their some uh, their forty fives. So, what do I need to add to my collection? I'm not sure if I'll be getting music to massage your mate by. There's a real uh, interesting moustache there. And yeah, another cool dude with this record collection. And then we have 
a guy who collects only Sesame Street <laughs> records, including Sesame Street Fever. So great stuff. So I highly recommend this uh, this book, uh, Dust and Grooves, for us record collectors. I'm going to show some uh, records with uh, interesting sleeve design. So we've got uh, Sing It Again, Rod, with the, the whiskey glass. So it's uh, full there and then empty. Yeah. We've got uh, VCLT. This is from a uh, courtesy of Pete from Songs from the West Coast or Sounds from the West Coast. And I had this on CD and I said I'd really like it on vinyl. And Pete kindly sent this to me. Shown this one before, Ogden's Not Gone Flake. Have to be very careful with that one. And then Mott with the die cut cover. and a fantastic collection of songs. And then another one with a die cut cover. This is both directions at once. The Lost Album by John Coltrane. Really nice die cut and graphics on there. So I really like uh, collecting these uh, these special artwork or special presentation. Of course, there's one that looks like a wallet and has the billion dollar note. So that's important. I'd love to have the public image limited PIL uh, canister like film pan container. Don't know how much that would cost me these days. But uh, yeah, that, that would be a useful one to have in the collection. Also, highly recommend something, uh, not sure which, which video streaming platform it's on or film. Uh, TV streaming, but uh, there was a great, I think it's on Netflix, a great documentary called Hypnosis Rounding the Circle. Not rounding the circle, squaring the circle because the record is circular, but the sleeve is square. So, yeah. That's where we have Dark Side of the Moon by Hypnosis. And we also have the original soundtrack with the second sitting for The Last Supper and I'm Not in Love. Really good album, this. And yeah, the, the artwork is just divine. Although I think that one of the Hypnosis uh, owners said to the artist that yeah the gloves aren't right so yeah <laughs> great feedback I'm also a fan of Roger Dean's artwork but I think this is only Roger Dean illustrated cover that I've got in the collection so should I be getting more yes some yes songs tales from topographic oceans etc budgie and I think there's a, a Motown chart busters with a Roger Dean cover on it. So should these, should those be added to the collection? And then speaking of well, that, squaring the circle, the documentary about hypnosis said that, yeah, a record collection is like a poor man's art collection. So the, the covers of all these 12 inch 
pieces of vinyl are works of art in themselves and yeah we don't need to go to an art gallery to enjoy good art we just need to look through some of our collection an existential crisis for the collection should i stop collecting now should i reach that 1111 and then just stop there or should i continue with the joy of crate digging and visiting all these wonderful record shops in Aberdeen yeah so what should I do next what records do you recommend that I add to the collection will I listen to your recommendations yeah is there you know I see on Facebook uh, various groups and sometimes some threads on this YouTube vinyl community group of channels about, you know, 10 records you would recommend to a new starter. Uh, yeah, but yeah, should we just let people enjoy discovering music for themselves? Uh, go to the different genres by all means have a chat with them. If you like blues, you might like, you know, this Muddy Waters album, or have you listened to some Skip James or some Sleepy John Estes? Uh, if you like classical, have you listened to Philip Glass's Violin Concerto? You must have that in your collection. Uh, if you're into the the stones you must have exile on main street but do you really need their satanic majesties yeah uh, just because i like a certain album i love lazaretto should i be saying you must go out and buy that uh, album because as a vinyl lover you'll love dropping the needle on the inside next to the label and it works its way outside. I love early uh, jazz and blues. Uh, Joe Buzzard, who features <laughs> in this, an interview with him in this mighty tomb as well, has got all this collection of 78s, but uh, really stopped, uh, you know, didn't buy any LPs by Elvis or, you know, these uh, newfangled uh, groups that, uh, yeah, are spoiling music. Very opinionated is uh, Joe Buzzard, but yeah, uh, look out for videos about his collecting uh, and going around the Appalachian Mountains uh, asking if you got any of these 10-inch shellac uh, singles. Do you have Stackerly Blues, etc.? So, yeah. Yeah. And I want that Public Image Limited metal box, uh, cylindrical box. Uh, I love the artwork on the Gorillas albums. I'm missing Cracker Island. I need to get that. Uh, I'm missing a few Gorillas ones. Uh, when I get to that 1111, am I going to replace CDs with vinyl? What about the albums that I've got on both vinyl and CD? Should I get rid of the CD and just keep the vinyl? Or the other way around? You never know. I, <laughs> I was looking up on, yeah, one of these online shopping platforms, one where you can buy just about everything, and up popped Sounds of South American Frogs as a vinyl album. Should I add that to the collection? Should I get sound effects by the jam? And if you remember that sleeve, 
it was based on the sound effects albums that you had, you know, a helicopter landing, a, a jet fighter taking off, a locomotive, church bells, etc. Maybe I should have that. I remember seeing a long time ago in a shop in Glasgow, uh, I think it went with Skeletrix, and it was a record that played, you know, the start of a Grand Prix in the, the 1970s, etc. I think there was about 18 tracks, you know, one for the start of uh, this uh, Belgian Grand Prix in Spa, one from Silverstone, one from Brands Hatch, just room, 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 room noises, you know, that you might get the start of a track on, on uh, Roxy Music or uh, or uh, Mott the Hoople album. Yeah. Where's my collection going next? And <laughs> will I be able to stick to the one in, one out when I get to that magic? 1,111. A couple of additional thoughts. At one stage, I used to like to think my, my collection was very diverse. And so the idea was that uh, if we had people coming around for dinner and I asked them if they wanted to listen to some music, that I could say, what do you like? And I would be able to play them jazz or reggae, courtesy of uh, The Harder They Come or Bob Marley's uh, legend. Uh, yeah, not an extensive uh, reggae collection, but yes, I do have some reggae. I do have some hip hop. I've got some Dilla Soul and I've got some Beastie Boys and I've got a hip hop compilation, uh, have lots of classical uh, CDs. I've got, yeah, the Stones, Bowie, Beatles, did I say Stones and Jack White? And yeah, I've got folk music. I've got, yeah, world music, just courtesy of the Buena Vista Social Club. Uh, but I've got lots of blues, lots of early jazz. I've got some bebop. I've got some comedy records in the shape of Scotland the what? Have I got any avant-garde? I'm not sure. I've got soul. I've got heavy metal. I haven't got any thrash rock. Do I need any thrash rock? Why do I have a collection? Will my daughter and her uh, future husband and potentially their children be interested in any of this vinyl collection that uh, was collected from 71 to 2000 and X? So, yeah, or will it end up in a charity shop or sold for a fraction of the cost of building up the collection. Am I worried? I've had lots of years, lots of hours of listening enjoyment. So, so just a few things to ponder about there, but yeah. I collect for the sake of collecting. I collect I collect for the music. I collect because you guys and girls <laughs> like collecting and I like making videos about the collection. When I was younger, I did think I would like to write a book about, you know, essential albums you should have. And if you like such and such, who you might also like. But then having said that earlier, yeah, why should I impose my tastes upon you? But yeah, it's been fun sharing my musical journey with uh, everybody out there in vinyl community land. Bye again. Take care. See you for 
video 101 in the not too distant future.